Street Journal U.S. News Editor Glenn Hall, along with Heritage Capital President Paul Schatz. Glenn, let me go to you first. Oh, okay, they're worried about the credibility, I'm assuming from what Peter was saying, if they don't raise rates, is that right? That's right. They've been signaling for a long time that they wanted to move, and they've been following the dots, and they've been going in the right direction. So this anticipation is, is very strong that the, the time is to move. And we've also heard uh, Fed Chairman Janet Yellen worrying that if they don't act soon, they might be forced to make an abrupt action later on, which would be even more disruptive. Hmm. All right, let me bring in Paul. Um, okay, we, we heard again, we've got to keep an eye on inflation and employment, uh, Paul. What exactly are we waiting for? What are, they, what are the actual trigger points on those uh, two uh, particular topics? Well, first, I can't find anywhere in the dual mandate where it says credibility is one of the reasons <laughs> that the Fed should take action. I I'm floored to hear that. Uh, frankly, I I'm embarrassed for the Fed. And I'm a big fan of the Fed. I cannot believe they actually put that in the minutes. That's number one. Two, <laughs> I'm, I'm an outlier on this. I don't think they should raise rates, but if they're going to, now is certainly the time. They've laid the path, I mean, literally, brick by brick, Lincoln log by Lincoln log, to raise rates <laughs> in December. If they didn't, e every person on the street would, would laugh even more than they already do. So the Fed is looking at, clearly looking at the inflation data, looking at the jobs data, looking at GDP. None of them, none, lead to an overheating, hot, worrisome economy, but the Fed's going to do this anyway. I think it's wrong. Just raising rates another quarter point or two or three more rates hikes in the next year is not going to give them, frankly, any bullets in their arsenal when they actually need to lower rates at the end of uh, 17, early 18. That's a good point. Glenn, um, should they be raising rates? Paul says no, but this meeting was before Donald Trump won, and of course we've seen the markets take off. What's your feeling? Well, I think if you look at the markets, some people are calling that the Trump trade effect. Yeah. There's certainly some optimism in there about how business climate might change under President Trump, but I think baked in is also an expectation that rates are going to rise and that you've seen the transition a little bit away from the fixed income and more into the stock market again. So I think the markets are expecting this. Should they, though, to, the, to, to Paul's point, should they be raising rates? Look, they have to at some point reload, right? They don't have many levers yet that they can pull yeah. again if anything should go wrong. So there is a point at which if the economy is strong enough and it seems that all the indicators are there, now it's not rampaging, mm -hmm. but it's strong enough to sustain a rate increase that gives them more flexibility in the future. Paul, I read in your notes that you uh, you predicted uh, the markets with the Dow would hit 19,000, but you're uh, uh, a little, um, perhaps they did it too quickly, if I'm reading your, rights correct, uh, uh, your notes correctly. Why are you concerned that the market's gone up too fast? Well, that's right. I, I'd called 18 and 19, and in 2010, I said, before this bull market ends, we're going to see at least 20,000. I stick by that, although I may be too conservative. The, the rally from the, from the day before the election till now has been very steep. There's nothing wrong with it. You've got phenomenal leadership from banks, from discretionary, from transport, from semis. You've got de defensive issues getting hit over the head pretty hard. Um, the bond market's really been the, um, the, the, the decimation mm -hmm. point. So I'm a little concerned that bond yields have really skyrocket as much as they have. There's nothing wrong with the rally over the intermediate term. Over the short term, I'd like to see a little bit of pause, a little digestion, a little less exuberance from people who were bearish all along and all of a sudden woke up and said, wow, we have, we have a new president-elect. Let's start buying equities in mass. That, that's not great over the short term. Yeah, but long the, term, all systems go. Yeah, you're not the first to say that, Paul. Glenn, look, the economic landscape has changed since the Fed had this meeting that we're just getting the notes on. Look, stocks are up bond yields are up, the U.S. dollar is up, the market's in record territory. How does that change the thinking of the Fed, do you think, or does it? Well, I think we'll, we'll see when we get deeper into these minutes, but mm. part of the equation there is understanding, you know, what is the economic climate going forward? And we had a lot of uncertainty walking into that election. At least we have a little bit more clarity uh, now that we're past the election. So that changes the dynamic and the equation a little bit for the Fed in terms of trying to see what the future might hold for the economy. They don't want to see the economy overheating, but they also don't want to see it underperforming. How much stimulus can they leave in the marketplace is the big question.